Chef Peter Lee and culinary student Emily Whitovich are heating things up in the daytime kitchen. And Emily, what is it that you're going to show us how to make today? I'm going to be making a butter squash or butternut squash apple soup and with a little bit of curry in it as well. It sounds delicious. So what are some of the ingredients that go into this soup? Well, we have a little bit of diced onion. Um, we're also going to add our house curry powder that we do just in the college. And then we have our seasoned butternut squash that we've grown right at the campus as well. Okay, so let's start getting to it. And Peter, while she's slicing up the onion, why don't you tell us about Durham College's Center for Food field to fork philosophy? Well, these days everyone uh, is, you know likes to eat locally, uh, likes to support support the local markets and the farmers. Uh, we do that at the college. We have a cluster of programs where we have culinary, hospitality, and also uh, farming students. And so there's a large parcel of land at the Whippy campus, which is dedicated to growing produce. And you can see some of the produce that we grow, like everything in this soup other than our coconut milk, we can't really grow coconuts again, <laughs> uh, is grown from our fields. So this morning I, I went out and picked some butternut squash, some eggplant, some onions. We have an apple orchard on site, so it's, um, it's pretty much as fresh as you can get. See, and that wasn't something I was aware of. Where can we go to eat this delicious food that you prepare? We do have a restaurant at the Whippy campus at, uh, down at Cham Champlain Avenue. It's called Bistro 67. I've seen that. I thought it was for the university. I thought it was for the college as well. Well, it is open to the public. Uh, students definitely do come and have lunch and dinner. Uh, we are open Tuesday through Saturday. And um, we do have, uh, the students do run a course through the restaurant. So you will see students serving and also cooking your, your dinner or lunch. Okay, so you're sauteing those onions now. What are you looking for? I'm always curious about what you're looking for to know that the onions are cooked the way they're supposed to be cooked. We want them to be translucent. Okay. So you can see right through. We don't want any color. We just want to give them so they're going to be nice and tender and all the flavors can flow through properly. Sometimes they start to caramelize. What does that mean? All the sugars are going to come together from the onion. You're going to get the most flavor out of your onion as well. And that's what you would like. You want to get as much flavor from that, keep that veggie as you can. Okay. So what, you, what you're going to do is you're going to develop flavor. Like we can make a soup, you know, you have your stock, you can throw your onions in, you can throw your butternut squash in, your curry, and it'll be good. Mm -hmm. But when you're sautéing or sweating your onions first, you're pulling out a lot more depth of flavor. So and if you ever have a soup that tastes thin, you know, maybe they took a little shortcut, but if you take the time and sweat your onions properly, you're going to get a much better flavor. I love the proper terminology that you're using. You're not saying sauté, like I said, it's sauté. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and sweating the onions, that's so interesting. You have to make sure you have the proper knife for cutting these. <laughs> yes, oh yes, you want a nice, big, strong knife. So right now I'm going to be skinning, taking the outside of the butternut squash off to make sure that we can get as much as the, the fruit on the inside that we can. And I'm going to be chopping it into a bit smaller pieces. That way they cook down properly okay. in the pan. They're not too tough and it doesn't take us quite as long either. And so is that what you have here also? Yes, yes. So that is some pre-cut up, which I'm going to make a little bit smaller. And you don't have to worry about your cuts being perfect or anything like that because they're all going to get pureed in the pot anyway. That's good. I guess you do still want them to be a bit uniform so that they cook at Even. the same time. They yes. cook evenly. Yes, exactly. So that's great. What are some of the programs, Peter, that you have available? Well, we have a one-year culinary skills, a two-year um, culinary management program, and they're really designed to train the future chefs to achieve their Red Seal designation. So Red Seal is kind of like your license to cook, even though you don't really need a license to cook. But you know, if you look at the trades in general, electrician, plumbers, they need a, a Red Seal desi designation in order to work. Right. So uh, we do have that standard for cook. And so we are training our, our young chefs to become the professionals of tomorrow. We also have a post-grad uh, baking program. And uh, if you see this loaf of bread here, that's actually a pumpkin loaf. And so uh, the great thing about the post-grad uh, baking program, it's only one year, and it gives the student um, experience in cooking and baking, which makes them a lot more marketable. So if, you know, a lot, a lot of restaurants sure. make their own desserts. If I have a pastry chef who can make desserts, who can make breads, that's, that's a more variable, desirable valuable employee for me. So we only have about 15 seconds left. <laughs> what else would you be putting into the soup? 
we're going to be putting our house um, curry powder, which is different in every home that's made in it. Um, and yeah, it's just going to put enough in that you get a nice aroma from it, and it'll finish off your soup beautifully. That's perfect timing. We're going to have more with Chef Peter Lee and Emily when we return. Stay with us. That's perfect Holy timing. Cow.